Hey, what's up guys? Welcome back to the channel. My name is Travis and welcome back to another video. So today we're going to be doing a subscriber Q&A. As you guys know, you can submit your questions via the comment section, email, or Instagram. And every single week, I like to take one or two, try to make a video answering the question, not only helping you, but anyone else who might be watching the video. So with that being said, this week's question is about dosing nitrates and phosphates. Now, specifically, they're asking, hey, should I start dosing nitrates and phosphates? And if so, how do I get started? Now, before I answer the question, if you guys want to support what I do over here, uh, head over to my website, fishofhex.com. Every month I try to do like a discount. Uh, this month is 25% off site-wide. Just use the code 25% off now at checkout. I'll put a link to that in the description as well, the comment section. Either way, appreciate all the support. And don't forget, we do offer a firefighter, veteran, and police discount of 20% uh, 20, 20 off all the time and you can uh, submit your information on our website check that out and uh yeah so with that said let's go ahead and answer the question and see if we can help them out okay so before we get started let's go ahead and talk about the recommended levels of nitrates and phosphates in a mixed reef tank even though the 300 is primarily sps i still have a lot of lps and soft corals within the main display as well as the frag systems attached to it so with that being said the recommended phosphates is going to be a 0.05 to 0.15 and nitrates of 3 to 5 ppm those are kind of the baseline recommendations. Now, personally, I do stay a little bit higher on my nitrates. I like to stay around 8 to 10 ppm just because I do get the best polyp extension for this current setup. The 125 wasn't like that. It did like the lower levels, so your system may vary. But really, anything in those recommended ranges will be fine, and you can deviate outside of them higher. I would not go any lower, but you can go higher if you so choose. So when it comes to dosing nitrates and phosphates, and if you should start, there's a few things that you need to consider and look at before you start putting anything into your tank. And I can't stress this enough. When you're testing nitrates and phosphates, it's good to use multiple test kits. I'm saying like maybe use an ICP test, maybe use a HANA, Red Sea, NIOS, either way, using multiple test kits, get an average reading before you start dosing anything. Because sometimes it's just the way it is, things fail. Sometimes we get an off reading and you're like, hmm, is it really that low? We panic, we start dosing stuff to our tank, just to come to find out that it really wasn't at that level because we tested it later. It's through the roof. We have green hair algae. We have all sorts of stuff going on. All we had to do was use another test or do the test again to verify what the reading is or what the number is and then make our decision if we're going to dose or not. So first and foremost, make sure you're getting an accurate reading of your nitrates and phosphates before you start dosing. Now, the next thing to consider before you start dosing is how much do you want to spend on nitrates and phosphate supplements? Now, personally, I have my own on the website. Really good deal. They've been pretty much the same price for like four years now. And uh, it's five or six years. Yeah, it's been a while. It's, they've been the same price since I originally started selling them. And with that, uh, it can add up over time. If you're buying this stuff and you're dosing a ton of it to your tank uh, every single week or every month, it can add up regardless of where you're getting it from. Now, uh, what you can consider before you start dosing is your feeding habits. Think about it. Are you feeding the tank enough? Are you feeding a variety of food that could not only benefit nitrates but also phosphates? Are you feeding a lot of meaty foods and not enough greens, which could potentially add more phosphates to the tank? So look at your feeding, how much you're feeding, how often, what type of foods, again, before you start dosing, because maybe you can make your own fish food. Um, I'm just kind of you know kicking myself out of business here <laughs> or selling myself out of business whatever um you could start making your own fish food adding more greens like broccoli and nori and stuff to aid in elevating your phosphate levels you can add more shrimp or meatier foods like octopus scallop stuff like that to aid in the nitrates you could do more or feed more that could eventually uh, increase those levels naturally through the feeding process not only will your fish be happier uh, and fatter but you're also going to take care of the corals and all that stuff at the same time so um Look at your feeding habits, make sure they're on track uh, or going in the right direction uh, for what you're looking to do. And if not, make those adjustments. And if you're still not getting the levels you want, consider purchasing some stuff. And again, I do have some on my website. Okay, now that that's out of the way, let's go ahead and do a hypothetical situation on the 300 gallon reef because the person who submitted this question didn't give me all the numbers and their entire specs on their system. So let's go ahead and just pretend that my 300 gallon reef is at zero or near zero NO3 and PO4 and I just don't feel like feeding more, so what do I do? Now, 
as I mentioned before, getting a baseline number is very important so you know where you're starting. Now, when it comes to dosing nitrates and phosphates, there's always going to be a recommendation on the bottle. For me personally, I always do a lower recommendation because people tend to overdose just by nature. It just seems to be something that's very common and I'd rather give you a lower um, recommendation to start off with. That way you're not you know, going crazy on the tank and getting huge spikes. Now, what I mean by that is you're gonna start off with the recommendation per gallon. I think uh, I think it's 0.5 milliliters for every 20 gallons. And you're gonna do that every single day. Now, um, every tank is going to react differently. Um, for me, the 300 gallon, if I'm at zero or near zero nitrates and phosphates, I'm usually seeing pale coloration, starting to see dyno, um, growth isn't that great, so alkalinity is actually going up because corals aren't growing that much and the, you know, the calcium reactor is still pumping out calcium alkalinity as normal, just the corals aren't growing that great. So the first thing I notice is once I start dosing, within the first couple days, I'm gonna get an alkalinity dip, usually a pretty big one, indicating that the corals are starting to uptake that nitrates and phosphates and starting to grow again. So you're gonna notice, uh, most likely, if you have a lot of coral in your tank, you're gonna notice a dip in alkalinity. Uh, I really wouldn't worry about that too much. It's a temporary dip, and it usually goes back to normal within the next week or so. So I wouldn't go cranking on the calcium reactor or going any craziness like that. I would just keep an eye on it, make sure it stays within an appropriate range, and go from there. Now, one thing I recommend for anyone who's dosing nitrates and phosphates is to uh, have a strict testing window. What I mean by that, what I like to do personally is test in the morning before I feed. That way I'm not feeding and then testing later in the evening at random times before I go to bed because there still is a chance that that food is in the water column, breaking down, turning into nitrates and phosphates. You can get some false readings. So testing in the morning, then feeding, and then basically 24 hours later doing the same thing while I'm actively dosing and adjusting uh, my levels. Now, I'm not saying you have to test nitrates and phosphates every single day forever, but while you're dosing this stuff, trying to get the tank back on track, it's probably a good idea to dose every day or at least a minimum of every other day at the same time getting an accurate reading. And that way you can adjust your dose. Now, when it comes to adjusting your dose, I still recommend that you go slow. Um, if say you're at 0.5 milliliters per 20 gallons and you're you know, working your way up, maybe uh, you're stable for a while and you just wanna get those levels up some more, maybe go to one milliliter per 20 gallons and then see how that does over the next couple days, it's always going to take three or four days for that tank to adjust to the dosing, uh, not only the growth and all the stuff that the corals are going to go through while they're getting the nutrients. So giving it a few days to adjust and then making further adjustments either up or down on the amount that you're dosing is what I recommend. Now there is one thing that happens, it's pretty common and it's something to consider while dosing. Now uh, what that is is Let's just say that you're dosing the same amount every single day for two weeks, and then the tank seems to be stable, 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 stable. Then all of a sudden, it just kind of shoots out of nowhere. The levels go up really high, and you're like, what is going on? Why, is, why are my levels higher? And then everything was fine just a few days ago. Well, usually uh, what I find is that the tank is... Like, if it's starving of nitrates and phosphates, it's gonna uptake that stuff early on. It's gonna absorb it, the corals are gonna grow, get their growth, be on track. And then eventually it's just gonna plateau and be like, listen, I don't need that much every day. That's not what I need to uh, kind of quote unquote survive. Now for me, if I'm having low levels, you know, I'm usually at 30 milliliters of nitrates a day. I'll bump that up to 90 to 100 if I'm trying to increase my levels. But once I start to see that it's spiking just a little bit, I'll back that dosing back down to 30 and it will just plateau and the system will be at its normal maintenance dose. So you just have to figure out what your maintenance dose is. And the only way to do that is to test consistently, again, every day or every other day over the next few weeks, keep your feeding habits consistent, all that kind of stuff, water changes, all that. And then eventually the system will plateau and then you can back that dose off just a little bit before it spikes, or maybe you'll catch it during the spike and bring it down. But it is very common that people see that and they kind of freak out and they stop dosing altogether, which then takes it in the opposite direction. They're like, oh no, it's too high. Let me go cold turkey on dosing. And then it plummets. So again, finding that what that amount is that maintenance amount and then continuing with that. So you're just gonna have to test and see when that uh, happens. All right, so let's go ahead and move on to some methods of dosing nitrates and phosphates. Now, me personally, I like to use an auto doser, more specifically the Apex, and I am only auto dosing nitrates at the moment just because my food is full of phosphates, so I don't really need to dose that stuff at the moment. But if I do go on vacation, like I mentioned in previous videos, I will put it on the auto doser at that point. But either way, um, 
auto dosing is very common for nitrates and phosphates. It allows you to fine tune it. It allows you to spread out the dose throughout 24 hours. And you can kind of see where you're going to fluctuation spikes based on that. And uh, yeah, it's just easier overall. And adjustments are relatively easy, you know, getting through the apex. Now, if you don't want to use the apex, you're more of a tank body. You're in the tank all the time. You're always fiddling with it. I would recommend uh, testing in the morning, do your feeding and then do your hand dosing at that moment. Now, you can dose multiple times a day if you want. Again, we are trying to keep our dosing away from our, or our dosing and our feeding away from our testing schedule. So I wouldn't dose at night before you go to bed um, just because you are going to get some of that over on the testing in the morning. So um, testing in the morning, feeding in the morning, dosing in the morning, if you are doing it by hand, again, giving the tank 24 hours to kind of figure out where it wants to put all the nitrates and phosphates, and then you get an accurate reading when you're testing. So those are the two methods. Um, it's really personal choice and kind of what you want to do. Well, guys, that's pretty much it for the video. I think I covered everything. Um, if I missed anything, feel free to put that stuff in the comment section. If you're doing something different or you have any recommendations, again, put that in the comment section, help each other out. Appreciate that. And uh, yeah, so if you like the video, don't forget to subscribe, hit the thumbs up. And if you want to support what I do, again, head over to fishofhex.com, 25% off this month. Use the code 25% off now at checkout. And uh, I appreciate all of you and I'll see you in the next video. Peace.